Uh, number one, we have a market that's basically on the flat line. The SPY right now, the S&P 500, is trading virtually flat. Um, this coming after the jobs data, the private sector jobs data came out. So this morning at 8.15 a.m. Eastern time, we've got the ADP private sector numbers. Now, these are not the non-farm payrolls that will come out on Friday. This is just the private sector numbers. The private sector numbers coming in at 242,000 uh, new jobs created. That was slightly better than expected, slightly better than expected. So the markets were initially kind of flattish to positive, then they sold off a little bit. Now they've come back up a little bit as the markets are disregarding this and turning, honestly, turning their attention back to Jerome Powell. Now you might say, well, why why back to Jerome Powell? What's, what's the big deal here? Well, yesterday he came out and he basically said that the Fed was going to be very aggressive still on interest rates. And basically he even... He even alluded to the chance that there could be a 50 basis point rate hike uh, later this month when the Fed makes their decision. So that was a little bit of a shock to the market. We saw the S&P 500 collapse pretty sharply here. In fact, let me go to my charts and we can take a look. This is the daily candle right here on the S&P yesterday. So the S&P 500 had a big drop of about 1.5%. That's a big drop for the S&P 500. Like it or not, for crypto investors, the U.S. Federal Reserve policy on interest rate hikes and high inflation is the single most relevant measure for gauging demand for risk assets. By increasing the cost of capital, the Fed boosts the profitability of fixed income instruments. But this is detrimental to the stock market, real estate, commodities, and cryptocurrencies. Hello and welcome to Crypto Street. In today's video, Founder and Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and Verified Crypto Investing, Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. Now, the crypto markets, let's touch base on Bitcoin here, because I'm sure everyone's wondering about that. The crypto charts continue to languish. And what I mean by that is you now have a potential breakdown of this little mini bear flag right here with a short-term uh, target of around 21500 So we're only about $500 away from that. That would be your short-term support. Now, again, this is only a minor support. Now, this is going to be a, a little education I'm going to throw at you guys. All right, so what we know is that this line connects through here, which then connected through here, which then connects right through this area. Now, a lot of people think this is major support. Why? Well, this was the pre-FTX high. It collapsed. Here was your FTX high resistance, pulled back, broke out, and hit. Now, in in essence, it is going to be support. So 21,500 is support. The reason I classify it as minor support versus major, and by the way, the difference between minor and major, this is important. Major support, you expect a big bounce and a significant amount of time that, that the chart bounces off of that level. So it could be a month, it could be three months, it could be something like that. Minor, you expect a smaller bounce, so you still expect a bounce, right? I mean, that's why it's still called minor support. But again, the key is minor support, you get a small bounce, and it only stays above the level for a short amount of time. So again, that's the difference between major and minor. People are always asking me about the difference between major and minor support, or resistance, by the way. So this is minor. The reason it's minor is you just hit over here, and you got a bounce. It wasn't even that big of a bounce. And then you came in. One positive aspect of the Fed's meetings is that they are scheduled well in advance so Bitcoin traders can prepare for those. Federal Reserve policy decisions historically cause extreme intraday volatility in risk assets. But traders can use derivatives instruments to yield optimal results as the Fed adjusts interest rates. The other thing I want to point out to you guys, and this is a little spooky. Look at this formation. All right. And I showed this in my daily analysis video yesterday uh, as well at InTheMoneyStocks.com. But if we zoom out here, look at that pattern. Does that look similar? So again, look, it's a mini-me of the bigger pattern. And so what part of technical analysis is recognizing the, the similarities of charts? Now, you don't necessarily, if there's no guarantee, it plays out the same way. But in general, it's a probabilities game. And always remember that. So if if you have a chart set up that did something in the past, and if you look past at past chart setups that, you know, nine out of every 10 times it does, you know, A, B, and C, 
Well, then what you do is you say, okay, well, probabilities dictate I'll get the same ABC move. All right, now again, it doesn't guarantee it because you're only getting probabilities of, let's say, 70, 80, or 90%. But again, it puts you in a position to be the house of the casino versus the gambler. And we never want to be the gambler, right? I mean, the bottom line is the gambler is ultimately you play long enough, you're going to lose at the casino. It's just the nature of the beast. Okay, so short-term support on Bitcoin remains at 21500 If that breaks, you have this little pivot low right here around 20400 or 500 Ultimately, I'm still anticipating a fall to about 18,000 and change. So we'll see again where when that occurs. But again, you do have two minor supports that you have to get through. The only thing that would change me bullish to a 30,000 target, you would have to take out this high pivot as well as this upsloping line right here. So basically, if you get through 25, 26,000, you should very quickly go to 30,000. Right now, the charts are not in favor of that. They're definitely kind of in the more downward bias uh, camp. Another challenge for traders is they face pressure from Bitcoin being highly correlated to equities. For example, the 50-day correlation coefficient versus the S&P 500 futures has been running above 70% since Feb 7. Although it does not state cause and consequence, it is evident that cryptocurrency investors are waiting for the direction of traditional markets. It's also possible that Bitcoin's low emissions could prove to be a benefit as investors realize that the Fed is running out of options to curb inflation. By raising interest rates even further, it could cause the U.S. government's debt repayments to spiral out of control and eventually surpass $1 trillion annually. This creates a huge incentive for Bitcoin bulls, but extreme caution is needed by those willing to make trades based on interest rate hikes. Next up, we got to go to gold, guys. I know you all want the gold analysis here, which continues to be my favorite uh, asset for 2023. Um, again, the key here is, and think about this, and I said this yesterday, I had a great interview with David Lynn. I'm sure a lot of you guys caught it on the post that I did on uh, Twitter, but just a fantastic interview on his new station. But the key is this, is that if you look back here when gold was at $20, 2070, interest rates were 0%. Now, we know that gold falls when interest rates rise. Now, if you had told me back then that interest rates were going to go to 5%, I would have said, okay, gold's got to go down massively from 0% on interest rates to 5%. And so the fact of the matter is we're 10% off the all-time highs on gold with a move of interest rates from 0 to 5%. That's incredible, the staying power of gold. In addition, we know this longer-term move up this is bullish consolidation. Absolutely, I can erase these other candles, uh, these other uh, trend lines, because really all you want to focus in on right now is that bullish channel of consolidation. When this thing breaks, you're going to go right to the double top, which would be triple top at that point, and then you'll zoom through it. Okay, so again, my end of year target is at least the highs, uh, the all-time highs on gold, and it should honestly be higher. This to me is going to coordinate, and the reason why you're going to get a move on gold significantly in the second, third, fourth quarters of 2023 is you're going to, number one, slip into a recession with the economy. By the second half, we're in recession, probably by October, November, I'm thinking. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, that's going to make people fearful about buying stocks because earnings are going to drop. So earnings are going to drop. That means the, the P.E. ratios, the valuations of stocks have to drop as well. That means that the stock market is no longer even an attractive asset to invest in, especially with interest rates still around 5%, which they should be in the second half of this year. In addition, the analysis is showing that while, while inflation is always easiest from 9% from or 10% where we were down to 5%, getting that last 5 to 2 is going to be ridiculously hard, ridiculously hard which makes it an inflationary environment above 2%. So not only is the Fed going to be on hold from really doing much, they're not going to raise interest rates much more, maybe another couple meetings, but they can't, once the economy slips too badly, once the jobs numbers start to weaken, they can't raise interest rates anymore. So they're going to go to the sidelines, inflation is going to stay high, and the, the stock market's going to falter significantly with an earnings recession. That is the money-making core to a breakout on gold here. In addition, I want to show you guys this. I've showed you guys this before, but look at this pattern in gold. So this is your monthly chart on gold. All right, I want to show you guys this. You have a, a move up for about two plus years. You have consolidation for two plus years. Now, remember that. Remember that. Up two years, consolidation for two years. Okay, 
Next, let's go all the way back to the 1970s, okay? And look at this. Here's your monthly chart on gold back then. About two years of consolidation, uh, of up move, consolidation, downward move of two years. Looks familiar, right? And then look at what gold did after that. Look at the run gold had to the upside. So what you're doing here is you're replicating the move that this had in the, in the 1970s, which, by the way, look at the inflation numbers. It's, it's the only comparable time when we can look at the inflation numbers um, and, and match them up. Other than that, we've never really seen inflation basically get as high as about 10% in recent history. And that was still, you know, 50 years ago. So it's still a while ago. But nonetheless, that is the best case scenario for gold. Now, gold did about a 9 or 10x here. I personally don't think it's going to do 9 or 10x because you have Bitcoin, you have other assets, right, that are starting to take a little market share. But do I think, again, a 3x, a 4x in the next three to four years? I do think that is a possibility. Also, other countries are buying massive amounts of gold. Their central banks, their governments, smart countries are loading the boat on gold. What I always say to members at InTheMoneyStocks.com, Verified Investing Crypto, is you got to follow the big money. If you see uh, central banks buying gold, why are they doing that? Hmm. You know, like these guys, even though I, I disagree with a lot of their moves, they know what they're doing deep down. They know that the printing of money can't end well. They hope that they can slip out of it. They hope that they can maneuver and somehow find a, a keyhole to slip through. But the essence of it is they know that printing of money is not a long-term solution. So what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.